So I finally finished top balancing the second half. <clears throat> All told, it took a little over 100 hours at 30 amps, 3.65 volts. I mean, 3.65 nominal, the charge voltage ramped up as you saw in the graph in the last video. So that represented about six months from the time I ordered them until the time I started the charging process. Hopefully it won't take you that long, but lithium iron phosphate doesn't lose a whole lot of its charge over time. So I don't know if it would have been a whole lot less. So again, if I had this to do over, I would have left this as a single 48 volt battery, set up the Victron charger, charged it until one of the cells hit the cutoff voltage and stopped, then switch it to parallel and do the top balancing. That way I would have gotten the bulk of the charge done a lot faster. Now at the end of the day, 100 hours sounds like a long time, and it kind of was, <clears throat> but I was also turning it off all the time. So it, if I wasn't here, I, I turned the battery off. If I was sleeping, I turned the charger off. Um, if I had been able to just turn this on and leave it on, 100 hours is what, four days? It's not a big deal. So if you've got a professional grade bench charger and you feel a bit more comfortable leaving it, well, if you've got a professional grade bench charger, thanks for watching. I'm not sure why you're here. <laughs> um, so yeah, when I build the rest of the battery packs for the boat down the road, I will try that and see how it works. If I've done that and I remember, I'll come back and put a link to that video in the description. The other thing that took me a bit of time was trying to figure out how to parse the logs in the iCharger X8. I heard back from both Jinsi and from RotoQuest, the company that I bought this from. Both were very helpful. Jinsi, they were very friendly is probably what I should say, but they didn't actually have the columns for, you know, this column means this, this column means this. But I dug around for a bit and I think I figured it out and I wrote a parser and the parser is simple little Perl script. Um, if you're a computer person and you just rolled your eye, hey, listen, I'm a system in this background. Um, and it's up on GitHub. I'll share the link. So I set it up so that you can take the SD card out of this, run it, and it generates a CSV and reports the cell pack voltage, charge voltage, the charge amp hour at any given time, and the cumulative amp hours. So now that this is finished, if you recall in the last video, I said what I'm going to do now is charge one more time. I'm going to do an individual top balance on a per cell basis. Do I really need to do this? Probably not, but I don't see it hurting anything either. And I guess part of me is worried that the pack, when I set it up in 8P configuration, if one um, cell had been quite a bit lower, but not lower enough that it would have brought the overall voltage of the bank down, it might not, the charger might have cut off while one cell wasn't fully charged up. So this is just me being really careful. I mean, I've got this many hours into it. Why not put a little bit more time in and I'm going to top balance each cell individually. Before I start, I wanted to mention um, when I previously taped up the handle of my wrench, I didn't tape up the tip. I'm not really sure why. Anyways, I've done that now because, okay, great. It protects against this kind of a short, but it's pretty easy to bang the back while you're working on, especially on the large pack like this. So what I've done is I've taken two bus bars. I put the battery monitor lead and the negative charge lead onto one bus bar, common post. Did the same thing for the positive charge lead and the part positive um, battery monitor. So this is pack A01. Doesn't particularly matter which one I start with. Let's put the right socket on this and give her a bit of a tighten. Give this one a bit of a tighten. Not killing it, don't need to. Now we can bring the charger. Okay, just got too paranoid for a second. Negative to negative, positive to positive. Okay, plug it in. And the camera can see that. It's still going to be running the same profile as before. It's currently showing 3.5, even though I charged 3.6, lithium iron voltage drops off when you remove the charger. So click once, same profile, 30 amp charging, lithium iron, and start. 
I don't expect each one of these cells is going to take very long. I suppose there's an argument that I could charge it at a lower amperage, like say 10 amps, but 30 amps is already just over 10% of the C rating of these batteries. So really, it's fine. If I top out at 30 amps, I'm happy enough. You can see the voltage has already gone up to 3.603, 6.000, it's stopped, and the amperage is falling off really quickly. So this battery is full. It's not going to take long at all. There we go. I'm going to do that to all 16 cells, and then I'm good. I'm ready to assemble it back into a full battery. Very briefly, after I turned off the camera, I went to undo the nut here, and this bus bar swung, and I thought it was a little bit risky that it might short out here. So I just taped off one of the bus bars, just so that when I go to take these wrenches off, or I take these bolts off, it doesn't swing out and cause a short. So I finished top balancing the individual cells, and I was about to put the BMS back on, and I found one connection the ring terminal had snapped off of already. And then as I was looking at the others, I could see some of them were getting, I don't know if that's focusing, they're getting close to snapping. And I can see some broken wires in there. Sorry if that's not focusing. So what I'm doing is, I mean, see how easy I just pulled that off, right? So what I've got here are these ring terminals that they have like a ramp shape inside. So it's easier to get bigger wires in. And they're also, they've got this insulation on the outside. The, I don't know if it's heat shrink tubing or not, but it's insulation of some sort. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the ends off. If I've got enough, I'll do this to all of them. I'm stripping these a bit long. Twisting them up a little bit and folding them over just to make the wire a bit thicker. And I'm taking the new terminal, pushing it in until, I really hope this is coming through on camera, I'm sorry if it's not, until I see where the wire is looped over, just stick out. And then I'm taking my crimpers, and crimping. And then I will try, when I'm done, shrink tubing these. But hopefully this will last longer. It's probably not a big deal. It's more the fact that as I'm learning, I'm pulling the terminals on and off, on and off, so they're constantly being flexed at that joint and they're breaking. So anyway, just a brief update. That's what I'm doing. I'm changing all the ring terminals before I put the battery back together. So now that this is back to being a 48 volt cell, I am ready, very nervously, to connect the BMS for the first time. Getting these balance leads wrong can instantly destroy the BMS. Um, poor Mads over at Sail Life just found that out a couple days ago. And he's very careful and checked everything. So here I am thinking, you know what, I've double checked this, I've triple checked this, but I'm still nervous. So if you recall in an earlier video, I showed the diagram of how the BMS leads are supposed to be. I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but it starts with the white connector, black lead goes to the main battery negative, and then we're going to go through all of the white leads, checking one at a time, seeing that the power goes up by roughly 3.2, 3.3 volts. Now the pack is fully charged, jumping more than 3.3. So it should go, say, 3.4, 6.8, and so on. Up through to the red connector, the red wire, sorry, on the white connector, next to the was it the black connector on the black? I keep saying connector. The black cable on the black connector through the white and finishing at the red connector, red wire on the black connector. I could probably edit that and do it over, but hey, there you go. So I've got these fairly tight. I'm hoping I can do this without obscuring the view of the meter. Let me turn the backlight back on. Hopefully that's still visible. And now what I'm going to be doing is starting, like I said, with the white connector. Oh, I hope I'm not blocking the view. The white connector, black wire, and I'm gonna start counting up one at a time. 
So there's 3.4, 6.8, 10.5, 13.8, 17, so it's 13.8, yeah, and then 3 point something is 17, 20.7, 24.18, 27.63, 31, 34.6, and now I go to the black connector, black wire, and I should now go to 38, 41. The backlight just turned off, but I can't press it again. Skipping the unused pins, 45, 48, 52, 51.9, and finally 55.3. So, if you remember from the previous video, that seems higher. And that's because the per cell voltage has gone up now that we've top balanced it. Okay, one more check for posterity. All right, I have checked this as many different ways as I possibly can. It's time to plug this in. Um, good Lord, I'm nervous. Does it matter whether I plug in the white cable first, or the white connector first, or the black connector first. Hmm. Well, let's try the white connector first. Please, no smoke. Okay. It seems to have come alive. I've got to... Going to the Zhao Zhang app. Oh, it sees it. Ah, the Victron is up as well. There it is. <laughs> the uh, Zhao, Zhang BM, Zhao Zhang BMS. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that right. Please enter your password. I think it was either all zeros or was it one, two, three, four? Use GPS to test speed. Why would it want the G? Okay, well, whatever. So obviously there's no calibration whatsoever, but it's showing remaining amp hours is 99.99 .99 amp hours. Discharge is on, total voltage 55.24. That matches what I measured before I turned on the camera. Actually, let me grab this right now and I'll confirm. Black wire to the ground pin. I am measuring 55.36. It is measuring 55.24. So it's a bit of a difference. I would trust this more than I would trust the, well, should I say that? BK precision isn't that bad, but it's not, I don't know if it's that good. Anyways, power is zero watts. That's fine because you can see there's no connection to the system negative and the positive is, I don't know if you can see that at all. The positive isn't connected at all. I'm gonna deal with that in a bit. Okay, well, now let's see if we can see the smart shunt. There it is. Oh my God, I have been so scared about turning this on. Ah, it tells you default pin code is six zeros. Pair requesting. One, two, three, four, five, six. Don't leave the app while well, update is in progress and stay close to the device. Oh, there's a firmware update. Okay, well, let's see what this is like. This is the most exciting, boring thing I've done today. Now the error light is flickering. I'm assuming that's because of the firmware update that's running. Oh, the air light on the on the smart shunt stopped blinking. Bluetooth light is flickering. I'm guessing that's it's rebooting. It's really crazy when a glorified resistor has a computer that needs to be updated and rebooted. We live in the future, clearly. Wow. Okay, so I'm not quite sure what to do next. I've been so worked up about this. I, yeah. Okay, so one of the things I'm curious about is... Can I turn the BMS on? 
or off. I know there's an optional two wire switch for it. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how to actually power off the BMS. I might just have to set up a switch and that optional cable that came with the BMS. All right, what I did was I took the lead that comes with the uh, BMS and I put a, I think it's an IP64 rated switch. This whole box will, before it eventually goes on the boat, be IP64 rated at least. Basically it means it's not waterproof, but it'll take falling water, should hopefully not cause any problems. So now what I'm doing is connecting the switch here. Oh, there's a jumper in there. Okay, so I bet you pop the jumper and it's going to turn off. There we go. It's out. Ah, and as soon as I pulled it out, the uh, smart shunt turned off. So I bet you now it's currently in the off position. I will plug it in. And turn it on. And it turned on. Sweet as. I'm sorry if I don't sound like I really know what I'm going to do next because <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do next. It's nice to know we have a soft power button for the BMS though, which will coincide nicely with a main battery disconnect we'll be hooking up later. All right, I suppose the next thing I should do is, I'm thinking now I'm going to try to make these batteries into basically giant gum sticks. So I'm probably going to bring this to the front of the battery. Let me move the camera. I need to figure out how I'm going to be mounting these on the boat and that's going to inform things like where I put the switches and the connectors and whatnot. This is very much subject to change but my current thought is I want to turn these into basically giant gum sticks. The idea is that I would be able to slot them into the engine bay side by side by side into two banks of three or something like that. Knowing that I'm going to do that, I'm going to want the majority of the connectors towards the front. So my current thought is I will bring, I'm going to have a actual physical disconnect probably mounted towards the front like this. I will probably run an extension to a socket that allows me to plug in the VE direct cable to the smart shunt so I can talk to it directly. Then I will have the soft switch for the BMS and finally the actual connection will be on an Anderson connector towards the front. The next video is going to be setting up the Anderson connector, figuring out the runs. Once I've got that sorted, <clears throat> the last decision, which will be a couple videos from now, will be deciding how am I going to actually build the box for this? Plastic would be ideal, but getting an exact size plastic box is not very likely. So I'm leaning towards right now marine ply, plywood that's designed for water environment or for marine environments, so it's very rot resistant. One of the things I need to learn for the boat is going to be fiberglassing. So possibly I'll do a marine ply with either an epoxy outer coating or with a fiberglass outer coating. I haven't decided yet. And then, yeah, that's, <clears throat> that's the next step. I've been so focused on getting the BMS and stuff set up, I hadn't really thought that far down the line. And I've got a bit more time to think because really what comes next, once I've got the Anderson connector and the main disconnect and everything wired up, is going to be connecting the Victron Quattro so that we have a charger and an inverter. More later. I'm the Digital Mermaid. Um, thanks for watching. See you next time.